Based on our previous lessons, we now know what forces are and do. We know that a force is a pushing or pulling action that has the ability to change the shape, speed, or direction of an object. If it is a contact force like a twist, it has to touch the object to make that change happen. But if it is a field force like a magnetic force, this change can happen even without touching the object. When thinking about forces, it is easy to only focus on the forces that increase the speed of objects, like when we kick a steel football and make it move in one direction. But after kicking the ball, we notice that it eventually comes to a stop. Remember, we know that forces change the speed of an object. So when a fast moving ball changes its speed and slows down to a stop, what force causes this change? Let's learn. The force that tends to act against objects in motion is known as friction. The kick that made the ball move acted in one direction, causing the ball to speed up. But the friction between the ball and the ground acted in the opposite direction, causing the ball to slow down. And that is the most important feature of friction, surface contact. Friction occurs on the surface of an object. Here, the outside of the ball is one surface and the grassy field is the other. Both surfaces are solid, so this is known as solid friction. As the texture of the solid surfaces change, the friction force changes as well. The rougher the surface, the more friction you can expect. If you ever played football on a beach, you would notice that the ball does not travel quite as far as it would on a smooth grassy field. Okay, now we know what happens when the surfaces change. What if we change the ball? If this ball were made of stone, it would get a lot heavier, which means that the ball will slow down a lot faster. This is because solid friction increases with weight. The heavier the object, the more friction will act on it. This is one of the reasons why it is so difficult to drag heavy objects along the floor. But hold on, if we have solid friction, shouldn't we have liquid and gas friction? Exactly. Liquids and gases are called fluids. So this type of friction is known as fluid friction. Just like solid friction, Fluid friction slows down motion as well. For example, if you drop a stone in a tank, you can easily see that the stone slows down as it enters the water. This is because the friction is acting upward, opposite the motion of the stone. Fluid friction also has its own special characteristic, and that is shape. Try this with a bucket of water. If you stir the water by making a slim shape with your palm, it is easier to stir the water. But if you turned your palm to make a flat shape, you would get a lot more fluid friction and it would be harder to move. These interesting characteristics of solid and fluid friction have both positive and negative effects. Now, try out some of the activities we used as examples of friction on your own and see if you can figure some of them out. In the next lesson, these effects will be revealed. See you soon.